The most sought after nests are those beneath bushes where the plants will offer protection from the sun. Once they have been reunited with their mates, the courtship begins, a ritual of dances, flapping of wings and clacking of beaks. When the ceremony is over, copulation takes place and will be repeated several times in the course of the next few hours. A few days later, the females lay two eggs which will be incubated by both parents for 40 days. While one remains in the nest, the other goes into the sea to feed. Their wings converted into flippers and their tapered bodies enable them to reach underwater speeds of up to 24 kilometers an hour, an impressive achievement for a bird. This adaptation is fundamental as they spend almost half the year living day and night in the ocean. There they eat, drink, play and sleep. Once they have satisfied their hunger, they quickly return to the nest where their partner is waiting for the change of guard. The eggs must never be left unattended because foxes, petrels, skyuas and seagulls are always around waiting for a chance to take them. To prevent them from being stolen, the penguins dig holes up to one meter long. Even so, many eggs and chicks are lost and it's rare for all a couple's offspring to survive. After hours waiting and watching, a seagull has discovered two unprotected nests together and swoops down on them. Though there are many other nests nearby, no neighbor risks abandoning their own eggs to defend someone else's. The parents' carelessness will prove fatal. Many others, having seen the seagull land, approach hoping for an opportunity, and some of them are rewarded. The presence of predators raises the alarm in the colony. But in vain, the parents will not arrive in time to avoid the tragedy none of their eggs will be saved. Parents of the nests that have been attacked are at this moment 800 meters away on the coast. Both they and the other penguins have not dared enter the sea for some minutes now. Another group of killer whales has approached the coast close by. This time, however, the predators are not out hunting but training. The adults are going to teach their young an exclusive technique they have developed here on the peninsula. The beaches of the Valdez Peninsula are steeply sloped, so just a few meters offshore, the killer whales can swim quite freely. 
This characteristic allows the predators to patrol the coast and use a hunting technique which is unique in the world. The killer whales localize the sea lions on the shore and once they have chosen their target, launch themselves onto the beach. They'll be stranded on the sand, but with a slope, it won't be too difficult to return to the water. Young and adults practice the maneuver several times on the deserted beach. If they don't become expert in the technique, the risk of becoming stranded forever on land is very high. The young also have to learn that this technique only works at high tide. At low tide, the beaches are not sufficiently sloped to be able to successfully carry out an attack. If they try, they will almost certainly get stuck long before reaching the shore. The class is over. Little by little, the family of killer whales moves away from the coast closely watched by the penguins and the sea lions who finally can return to the water. The young, like those of any species, take advantage of the rest to play together while the group moves off into the sea. Another day is coming to an end. The temperature starts to fall and the different species that live on the peninsula take advantage of the final minutes of light before returning to their burrows. Slowly, calm returns to the waters of the peninsula. Penguins, sea lions, and elephant seals have returned to the shore to spend the night. Only the whales break the silence at dusk. The Valdez Peninsula is today a unique and irreplaceable refuge for the wildlife of South America. Human presence, the first signs of which date back 3,200 years, has not managed to destroy this natural paradise. After many years of hunting and cattle farming, the Argentinian government decided to protect the peninsula and turned it into a wildlife reserve. Another Eden has been saved. Today, the whaling ships have been replaced by boats carrying tourists from all corners of the world. Tourists who come here to see this remote peninsula, which in the past the sailors called the refuge of the monsters.